The skyline of Avignon is a magnificent urban landscape. Overlooking the city and the Rhone River, the Roche de Dôme presents an exceptional set of monuments. This architectural group has been ranked by UNESCO World Heritage for Humanity. The Pont d'Avignon, also known as the Pont saint Benazer, is a famous medieval bridge in the town of Avignon in southern France. It was built between 1171 and 1185 with an original length of some 900 meters. But it suffered frequent collapses during floods and had to be reconstructed several times. Its surviving arches have successively collapsed or been demolished. The origin of the word Dom is very obscure and controversial. Its use is very ancient because in 1085 we find a mention of Sancta Maria de Dominis, or de Domo. It became metropolitan on the 21st of November, 1475, when the bishop was elevated to the rank of archbishop. Inside, the cathedral holds many pieces of art and furniture. The apse was rebuilt in Baroque style in 1672. The sacred ornaments, the illuminated liturgical books, the tapestries, the sacred vessels of gold and silver, studded with precious stones or enamels, the chests and reliquaries, the crosses and candelabras of solid silver or silver gilt, were taken out of storage each feast day for the Christian people to marvel at. A whole series of inventories conserved in the chapter archives enumerate and describe in detail the artistic wealth of the treasury of the Metropolitan of Notre Dame de Dom. The popes of Avignon, the bishops and archbishops, the Christian kings and princes passing through Avignon, the corporations, the guilds, the many gifts coming from the faithful, even the very humble, continually enriched the collection. The richly ornamented facade contrasts with the austerity of the Papal Palace. The legate Caffarelli Borghese reigned over the palace when Vice Legate Jean Francois de Bagny decided to build it in 1619. The harmonious esplanade enables one to step back to admire the facade of the cathedral and the grandiose perspective of the pontifical palace of Benedict XII and Clement VI. It constitutes a real panorama where the view stretches down to the palace square and part of the town. The Palais de Pape in Avignon is one of the largest and most important medieval Gothic buildings in Europe. It's one of many places called the Palace of the Popes. Avignon became the residence of the popes in 1309 when Gascon Bertrand de Goth, as Pope Clement V, unwilling to face the violent chaos of Rome after his election, moved the papal curia to Avignon. The site was that of the old episcopal palace of the bishops of Avignon. The square was created at the end of the Middle Ages. The pope's palace is primarily the result of two palaces being joined together. The old palace, built by Benedict XII, and the new palace built by Clement VI. The interior of the building was sumptuously decorated. Just off the Consistory Hall, this decorative gem was created by Matteo Giovanetti, a leading artist from Siena. The now faded frescoes depict the lives of St John the Baptist and St John the Evangelist, with exceptional use of perspective across the walls and the arched vault. The cloister is made up of four buildings around a courtyard. 
The upper gallery provides a passage between different buildings. The consistory wing is the extension of the private apartments. It comprises two rooms, the consistory and the grand tinel or dining room. In the south, an arched ceiling passage is built into the guest's wing or conclave wing. The consistory hall occupies the ground floor of the east wing of the cloister. The consistory was a regular assembly during which the Pope would receive visitors and deliberate on major church matters, be they ecclesiastic, theological, legal or political. The meetings were held either in the presence of cardinals only, the secret or ordinary consistories, or in the presence of cardinals and church or lay dignitaries, the public or extraordinary consistories. It's here that canonizations were examined and proclaimed, such as that of St. Bridget of Sweden. The vast hall of the Grand Tinel takes up an entire floor of the consistory wing. The word Tinel was used in Italy and in the south of France for dining rooms or refectories. Its wood panelled, bald vaulted ceiling was reconstructed in the 70s. In 1346, construction began on the great staircase of honour that serves the great chapel. The structure, formed from two straight flights of stairs that turned back toward the core wall, was an innovation found only in Italy at the time. The wide staircase is lit by windows giving out onto the courtyard and is flanked by rooms used as guard posts. The portraits of all the popes who stayed in Avignon and stones with Latin inscriptions decorate the room. The Parment Chamber is located in the eastern wing of the private apartments above the Jesus Hall. It's the antechamber to the Pope's chamber. This term parment describes all the tapestries that decorated the walls and seating. The Pope's chamber is situated in the heart of the Angel Tower. This room is divided up by moving partition walls. The Pope usually slept here with attendants called cubiculars who served him. He sometimes gave private audiences here too. The room is ventilated by a tall opening near the corner fireplace and gets its light from two windows. The north sacristy is in the south wing, which runs from east to west and forms an angle with the previous building. Its layout is asymmetrical and it has two vaulted bays with intersecting ribs. This type of architecture and the introduction of carved decoration Mark the difference between this and Benedict XII's palace, in which there are a greater number of wood-panelled vaults and ceilings. It was in the sacristy that the Supreme Pontiff changed his vestments during ceremonies held in the Great Chapel. Most of the plaster mouldings on show here were gifts from European cities. They portray political and religious figures or prestigious guests whom the popes received at the palace. The stag room was Pope Clement VI's study. The Pope had a bed and his own personal library set up here. The room also contained two chests lined with watered silk. The room derived its name from frescoes of stag hunting, most of which disappeared when the room was remodelled during the 18th century. The Cardinal's vestry is located in the St. Lawrence Tower. In the 14th century, the vestry was used as a sacristy during pontifical ceremonies, and the cardinals put on their sacerdotal habits here. The casts are copies of the funeral effigies of Popes Clement V, Clement VI, Innocent VI, and Urban V, as no pontiff was ever buried in the palace. Paintings depicting reeds and gold crests embellish the window recesses.
This room has a vaulted arch ceiling with intersecting ribs. The Great Chapel, which is devoted to the two apostles, Peter and Paul, was built by Clement VI. The single nave is 52 metres long, 15 metres wide and 20 metres tall. It's covered by seven vaulted bays with pointed arches, whose ribs descend onto slim columns. It's lit by four central mullioned windows in the south and by two double mullioned bay windows on each of the gabled walls. Before the installation of the stained glass windows, ordered from a master glassmaker in Avignon, the windows were covered with oilcloth stretched on wooden frames. This landing or loggia forms the court in front of the great chapel. It gets its light from the palace square, which is now the courtyard of honour, through the indulgence window. The great chapel door is the most important group of sculpture in the palace. The Pope's Palace has over 20 rooms, in particular the Pope's private chambers, and frescoes painted by the Italian artist Matteo Giovanetti, depicting scenes of historic events. The Palais du Pape is an exceptional group of monuments that testify to the leading role played by Avignon in 14th century Christian Europe. 